Hello, Aleph Null here, and I'm going to be teaching you about this controversial form of dance from Japan called Buto. But before I get into that, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. I took dance at the professional level, at the technical level, ballet and modern, about five years ago, and I've stuck with dance ever since. Now, ballet and modern is actually what eventually led me to Buto. It was one of the classes, an intro to dance class. And I had to research this style of uh, theater called, but, um, called No, N-O-H, from Japan. And in doing this research, I actually stumbled onto this very strange, bizarre form of dance called Buto. And ever since then, I was hooked ever since I entered a dance class. And so I actually set myself out to eventually do this form of dance. I didn't know how, but I had it set in my mind. And it was about probably a year and a half or two years after that entry to dance course, I found myself in India in, in uh, Dharamsala out in the Himalayas actually practicing this form. And so what this dance has done to me is just revolutionary. It's because the dance really gets in touch with really dark places that you've, you know, that you, that everybody has hidden. And what the dance does is it just puts all these things on your skin. And, and what you do is just dance it out. You be, actually become a character, your own character. So in a sense, this is what this art form is really about, or what it seems to be about anyway. In these lessons, I'm going to go through all the important things I've felt that I've learned through the two semesters of me um, dancing this in Dharamsala. The most important thing I feel is having this sort of openness to this, and an openness to Find the better person in yourself. My instructor, Raizon Lee, would have called this life resonance. Life resonance is basically resonating with everything, like everything in life. It could be like the light things, but it can also be the dark things and the in between. And when you resonate, that means you become open to it, and then you, there's you. It's like an open channel to understanding, and so this is basically the prerequisite to be able to get into all these movements in the buto type of way. Because buto is about what they would call blood. It's like the blood. It's like the essence, and this is what this dance emphasizes over other forms of dance which appear to the to many people anyway to be more of surface well buto is the stress is really on the inward on the on the inside on the essence on the blood on the bones on the spine uh, this is the most important part and then all the other things come after it's sort of like you first create the essence part and then you put clothes on this essence part and the clothes are going to be all the technique things I'm going to be talking about. I will talk about um, other essence-related things about Buto, of course, while I'm talking about the technique. But there's going to be a lot of both in my series. The creators of this dance form were Kazu Ono and Tatsumi Hijikata. The school that I went to was more along the lines of the school of Hijikata. Hijikata's method was about finding this so-called weakness of the body. In one of his videos, he goes into this realm where it's almost like there's just one tiny string of life left, but he chooses to actually dance with that tiny, 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 tiny bit that he has left which I feel this is the essence of 
Hijikata Buto. So this art form, Buto, came about after World War II. It was actually, it could be said it was a reaction to all the terrors that were happening at the time, with the bomb and everything. And, um, and so Japan created this art form to, as a reaction to that, but also to form something completely modern. Because back then, their modern dance was more of American modern dance, and Japan wanted its own signature at the time. This, this was a time of, of finding what was Japanese. And so with this style, what was found was something completely different. And so they borrowed many things from their history, from uh, the No Theater, the NOH Theater, and uh, a little bit from German Expressionist movement. And also from the Japanese mythology and the Japanese religious thought, like animism. All that's incorporated into this dance. 